Hi, my name is Lisa Keith. I'm a research plant pathologist with Ag Research Service in Hilo, Hawaii. And today I'll be talking about fungicide testing for coffee leaf rust control in Hawaii. Uh, overall, the summary for my talk today, I'll go over a little bit of the disease cycle and then go into how we test fungicides in the lab and one of our field tests. Before I get started, I'd just like to acknowledge the amazing team that we work with. I'll give a shout out to Lionel, Ava, Blaine, Pepe, all part of my lab group. Uh, and thank you for all of the growers and producer support. Um, also working together with the university and other agencies. So I know you've seen this uh, disease cycle picture before. But I just wanted to go over it again because of the importance of when and how you spray will affect the overall uh, coffee, life, coffee leaf rust disease. So we've mentioned that spore dispersal occurs by wind, rain, and worker activity predominantly. Um, the spores land on the underside of the leaf and infection occur through the stomates. So it's very important um, to get good coverage on the underside of the leaves. And sporulation, once infection occurs, uh, takes a couple of weeks. The spots start to enlarge and you'll start to see visible spores uh, within about 21 days. So it's very important to get your protectants down uh, prior to infection. Or once you start to see visible spores, uh, spraying to try to knock out um, the spore load on the leaf surface. And remember, for the pathogen Hemalea vistatrix, survival is primarily through the mycelium in the living tissue. So any type of protectant uh, fungicide spray you're going to do at this stage is not going to reach deep within the tissue where the fungus is residing. So this is where systemics are going to be very important. Okay, just to show you some pictures, um, this upper left one here, uh, this is the very first stages of infection. You'll see these tiny yellow spots on the upper surface of the leaf, and you won't actually see any symptom or sign on the lower surface, okay? so. Spraying at this stage, if it's not a systemic, will not actually get to the pathogen, okay? Once you see uh, some of these other pictures where you're starting to see the spots enlarge, um, become more chlorotic or yellow, sometimes brown, and you see these powdery spores, this is where what you're applying, if you get good application on the bottom side of the leaf, the underside, you'll start to um, knock out the inoculum source, okay? So I'll go into some of our laboratory and field testing. We use in vitro fungicide assays to try to determine if whatever product or chemical we're working with will kill spores by inhibiting germination. So just a brief, um, explanation of the methodology, pretty much fresh spores are collected from infected leaves, um, which are brought, brought back to the laboratory. The spores are mixed in a tube with whatever fungicide or product you're going to test. They're in the presence of the product for a certain period of time. And then a sample is plated on water auger, placed in an incubator, approximately 22 degrees centigrade, allowed to germinate in the dark for approximately 15 hours. And then the plates are taken, um, put under the microscope, and a number of spores, a, a high number of spores, um, are observed to see if germ tube germ tubes have formed um, to check for germination. 
And if a germ tube is present at least the length of the spore, this is considered a positive germination. So what we're um, showing you here in the bottom left is actually this is a spore and this is a germ tube. And we're hoping to find products that result in no germination in the laboratory, uh, which is this bottom right picture here. You don't see any germ tubes. So I'm going to go over some of our results for products tested for sanitation, uh, those registered for use in Hawaii on coffee against coffee leaf rust, um, what Julie and the IR4 program are looking at, and what really you're going to see is that in the laboratory, what is most critical is this direct contact and the right amount of time. Okay, so early on, we really tried to make sure um, what recommended sanitation protocols uh, were effective. And we looked at a number of alcohols, um, including ethanol and IPA or isopropyl rubbing alcohol. And we also looked at a freshly prepared bleach solution. And this graph is showing you in comparison to a sterile distilled water control. So these are just the spores in water. If you add 70, 80, or 95% ethanol, or 70 or 91% IPA, or a 10% freshly prepared bleach solution, pretty much within a minute, all spores are killed. Okay, so this is effective, uh, good for sanitation, for tools, for shoes, for even hands, um, really with 70% um, IPA being um, easily found. Okay, so this graph shows the percent germination um, looking at the registered products that can be used against coffee leaf rust in Hawaii. And again, uh, this graph, we're showing the comparison to a sterile distilled water control. So those are just spores in water um, compared with spores with badge, coside, and cueva, which are copper products serenade and double nickel, which are the registered biological products. These are bacillus species and oxidate, which is actually a hydrogen dioxide and peroxyacetic acid. So the three products for um, containing copper just contain different forms of copper. The two biologicals are different species of bacillus. And the spores and the product are mixed and held for a certain period of time before they're plated, um, either approximately four minutes and then left for 24 hours plated and um, germination rates were determined. So blue are four minutes um, in contact time with the, the product. Orange are 24 hour times. Uh, and these are the averages of two reps. The bars are actually the standard errors of the means. And you can see right away that the error bars are large, but I'd like to point out this is the average of two reps and the controls varied uh, quite a bit between the two reps. So the germination rates collected at different periods of time in different locations um, actually varied between 44% and 65%. But you can see that right away, what you'll notice, uh, badge X2 within four minutes, um, it killed all spores. Most of the others would take definitely more than four minute contact time, but less than 24 hours to see good control. And this graph is showing that um, all of the copper products and even uh, serenade, double nickel, and oxidate um, when you have the right contact time and the right um, amount of time, you'll get effective control at killing the spores. Okay, uh, this moves into um, looking at the systemic products that Julie and the IR4 program will be testing in the field. 
Um, again, compared to the sterile water control, which is this first bar here, uh, you're looking at um, the low and high rates of these uh, products, Quadris Extra, Apruvia, Preaxor, Excalia, Pyrofluzamide, and uh, Approach, as well as Dithane. And what this graph is showing you that even in essentially a minute contact time, most of it will kill spores uh, on direct contact. Okay, so to go into uh, the fungicide field trial that my team um, conducted uh, one location over in Kona, uh, Hulualoa area, um, looking at the products, again, registered for use in Hawaii. So that included the copper products of badge, coside, and cueva, uh, the biological serenade and double nickel, and also oxidate. Uh, trying to see if these products, when applied over time, would influence or affect incidence, severity, and germination rates. So it was a lot of data taking. I really give credit to everyone involved, especially Pepe doing uh, most of the spraying. Um, I tried to summarize everything in a table. Uh, the types of data we looked at were actually spots per leaf, the infected area per leaf in millimeters squared, the spore weight of the leaves collected, the germination rates of these spores. And so trees were sampled, um, eight trees per row, and one leaf per quadrant was collected at chest height, kind of a north, south, east, west of the tree, with a total of 32 leaves per treatment. These leaves were brought back to the laboratory in Hilo, um, and this data taking was then conducted in um, biosafety hoods. To try to give you uh, a sense of what the colors you're looking at, copper is yellow, bio the biological, so the copper products are, are yellow, so that includes badge and coside. Um, the biologicals are in green, okay, so serenade and double nickel are green. We had a combo of a copper and a biological, uh, that was actually Cueva and double nickel combo. That's blue. Um, oxidate is purple. The control, so just leaving um, trees to become infected naturally and to not have any treatment for the season uh, was pink. I should say that it definitely was um, a bit more complicated being that more than one variety was available in the field, uh, typical, Typica and Bourbon, but both were highly susceptible. And so as you can see, and I'll mention again, this is kind of the summary of a lot of data, but it's in one point in time. Okay, so the field uh, trial actually began January of last year. First, that's when the first sprays occurred. Um, sprays were as frequent as label allowed. Um, this kind of gives a picture, maybe a third into the season. Um, and then ultimately uh, sprays continued until harvest. So just to show you, when you look at spots per leaf, it could be as little as one um, compared to the control of at least 11. Um, and most of the products um, definitely cut down on the number of spots per leaf. Now the infected area, uh, you can see that coside and badge, the copper products also oxidate, definitely resulted in a smaller area as composed to uh, this pink control. Now, when you looked at the amount of spores, so actually um, removing all the spores, with a paintbrush and getting a weight, you can see that again, the products are resulting in less spores being produced um, from 0.1 milligram, um, 0.3 for some of the coppers compared to almost seven milligrams for the control. And when you looked at germination rates, you can see uh, again, variability, but products 
um, particularly the coppers, definitely um, inhibited germination. Okay, so to try to summarize then um, this information um, and look at it on percent incidence, so not spots per leaf, but actually the percent incidence in the field, um, collection of leaves, and if one spot occurred out of 100, that would be 1% incidence. And you can see, as far as the control, um, almost every leaf looked at would have at least a spot. All other products, the coppers, uh, the biologicals, and oxidate uh, decreased percent incidence at this time point, again, about a third of the way into the field trial. Okay, um, when we look at percent severity or the, the actual area of the leaf, um, the control, um, almost 2% versus the others, approximately 1% and below. But I will mention at this location that if you look at what our scale was, with zero being no coffee leaf rust, um, and three is actually less than 10% severity, you can see that the farm actually had perhaps high incidence, but rather low severity, even on the control trees. Um, but all of the products applied definitely um, had a positive effect on cutting down percent severity. Okay, uh, I would be remiss if I don't um, at least put one slide in of my favorite subject, uh, natural enemies of coffee leaf rust, and that this will be hopefully another option, uh, currently looking at the mycoparasites or the fungi that can attack uh, the fungi causing uh, coffee leaf rust. So to combat coffee leaf rust in Hawaii, um, as mentioned many times before, it has to be managed as a continuous epidemic. Um, goal to reduce sporulation, the spore dispersal and infection rate, of course, there's no silver bullet. bullet. Um, you have to use an integrated pest management approach with long-term and short-term strategies. Now, important tools definitely are these fungicides, uh, the copper fungicides, the biologicals, You'll, you see how important it is. It's one thing to be able to kill spores on a surface or to treat leaves so germination um, doesn't occur. But once infection occurs, the fungus gets inside the leaf, uh, systemics will be absolutely necessary to knock out um, this inoculum source that survives within the tissue. And with that, I will say thank you very much. I appreciate your time and I'll be happy to answer any questions or please email me at lisa.keith at usda.gov if you would like to reach out or have questions. Thank you.